that's awesome. I'd uh, like to bring on the social TV panel. Lauren, please bring your friends out and uh, take a look at how uh, the, uh, the, the, other, the experiences of, uh, of certain people in television and how social, uh, social TV right now, I believe it's truly it's in its infancy, but I was offered an opportunity for some friends of NBC to come and share their experiences from the inside. Also, come on down and have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, so we're here to talk about social TV. Um, I, my name is Lauren Bertolini. I'm uh, the senior social media editor with NBC Local Media. And here is uh, Steve Krakauer, who is with uh, Pierce Morgan Tonight as a digital producer. He's been with, um, he was an NBC page originally, with TV Newser, and uh, with Mediaite. Um, Kimber Myers is here from Get Glue as the director of partnerships. Um, Get Glue reached a million users uh, back in April and is up to 1.2. And then we have Jim Long here from uh, NBC News. And he's been with NBC for... Uh, important to note, though, I'm, I'm pinch hitting for Ryan Osborne, uh, NBC's director of social media. Terrific guy, and you should follow him. He's Rozzy, R-O-Z-Z-Y, R -O -Z -Z -Y, on Twitter. Very smart guy. Yeah, very true. Um, so, uh, social TV is something that has been growing in, I guess, popularity and something that the networks have been more and more focused on over the last few years. Uh, Adweek had a study um, that came out, I think, just this week that said 56% uh, 50 of the people that they polled um, used the internet when they were watching television and 40% used social networks. Um, so Steve with uh, CNN and Piers Morgan tonight, um, since they went live back in January, have used a variety of social media integrations. They uh, post questions to Jack Welch from Facebook users. Uh, just last night, Piers Morgan was on their Facebook page talking with viewers during the Jimmy Fallon interview. So I guess, Steve, to start, could you talk about some of the lessons you've learned um, with those integrations and how um, if they've taught you a way to consistently build smart conversations with your viewers. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, our social integration really started about a month before the show launched, even actually about a month and a half before the show launched in, in mid-January. And uh, right when I got to CNN in, in late November, uh, I talked to Piers, who at the time was a very uh, outspoken anti-Twitter person. Uh, it was Twitter's for twits and all this. And so, uh, but he had never actually used it or tried it. So I showed him how it worked, and uh, about an hour later, he had 12,000 followers, and he was hooked at that point. You know, his, his goal at that point was to get as many followers as possible. And, uh, and over time, you know, over the next couple of weeks, he really has embraced it. Uh, and, and now, obviously, you know, he's nearing a million followers. And, and that's been our, our main thing. I mean, we started with that started with the, the idea of uh, Pierce himself getting into the, the social media and, and really uh, valuing that. And that's, that's helped us out. And then from there, you know, our, our show Twitter feed uh, started up. We, um, we incorporate Twitter a lot onto our show. We have um, on our screen at all times, either Twitter or Facebook. Um, for the, our premiere, we had worked with Get Glue, actually, uh, to, on a Get Glue uh, sticker for, for the premiere. And that's continued on. You know, Facebook, we're looking to expand to, to other areas as well. I mean, the main lesson I, I've learned, I think, is that CNN itself it has a great system in place already. I mean, we have at CNN with you know, millions of followers, the CNN Facebook page. And by kind of uh, coordinating that in a, in a very real way, we're able to see what still ultimately matters, and that's ratings. I mean, you know, it's great to have a great conversation on you know, the social side of things. It's great to, uh, to get a lot of Twitter followers or Facebook fans. But if that doesn't translate to, to viewers, ultimately, in, in, the, in the Nielsen ratings, then it doesn't really matter. And so we've been able to kind of uh, find ways of, of having that work out for us. Is there any, I guess, specific example that you felt um really drove ratings then? Is there like one, one integration that... Yeah, uh, the Charlie Sheen show. Uh, right in the midst of, of Charlie Sheen doing these, uh, his, the, just the beginning of Crazy Charlie Sheen uh, was doing taped interviews. We got a live, uh, we, we appears to call Charlie, this was well documented, and asked him to do the show for an hour live. And he said yes, and then he kind of disappeared, as Charlie Sheen could do. Um, so we didn't know whether he was gonna come or not. He ends up showing up uh, about five minutes before the show was set to go live. That was the first time we could do any promotion. Pierce tweets it out, 
it gets put on CNN.com, Facebook, Twitter, and from the, the first minute of that show, we were about twice the number that we normally do in ratings. By the end, it was three or four times as much. And that was really, you know, couldn't be any more clear about what social media can do. Wow. So I guess to Jim then, uh, Steve just mentioned ratings, you know, as being the most important thing. In, in news, do you see that sort of staying true? Well, obviously ratings are what is going to sustain the enterprise. Um, and looking at conversion, what platforms convert? Uh, Facebook, the, their uh, director of media partnerships came out with some pretty stunning statistics. Um, roughly 1.65 billion shows, there have been likes, they've hit, clicked the like button on TV shows. So you look at things like Facebook, um, this data stream which is becoming sort of the, the new electronic programming guide, the new TV guide. When I was growing up we had a, a black and white set, we had five UF, UHF channels, three VHF channels if we were lucky, and we had a flimsy little TV guide that came in the Sunday newspaper. Now you have Facebook and now you have a recommendation engine uh, of people liking shows and, and all of this, all of these likings are obviously cumulative um, and that kind of seems to be where the action is. I think things can happen on Twitter in terms of news, dialogue between reporters and the rest of the reporters out there on Twitter, all of you guys who are out there creating all of this data and all this news that Jeff was talking about. Um, but I think, yeah, ultimately the, the sweet spot is where you're going to be converting, you know, p people clicking on uh, the like button on Facebook and then getting to know your show. And it may be a, a breakout moment like a Charlie Sheen, but over time it's going to happen more organically, I think. And I, right now I think we're trying to keep the linear audiences alive, the ones who, who sort of don't, they aren't on Facebook and they're probably going to age out, for lack of a better description. But um, yeah, so I think it's key to find the, the sweet spots where you're going to get people from Facebook to the TV set with, you know, Facebook or Get Glue or whatever the, the platform may be. Yeah, so, so Kimber, how, how does a platform, I guess, like Get Glue improve the <coughs> viewing check. experience for the user? And, and what does that, I guess, add to um, know, someone who's already maybe on their computer while watching their favorite show? So it's just kind of a quick introduction to what Get Glue is. The, the like, very quick explanation is that we're, like, Foursquare but for entertainment. So people are checking into TV shows, movies, books, music, whatever they're doing at that moment. And it's not limited by where you are. So if I'm watching Piers Morgan here, and my mother is watching it in Ohio, and somebody else is watching it in Idaho, what's important for us isn't the location. It's that we're all experiencing the same content. And so we work with partners to drive TuneIn, mainly for TV. And um, how it works is we reward people with stickers, which seems like this sort of kitschy thing, but it's actually been incredibly successful, and adults love the nostalgia of it, and it actually, like, you can identify who you are as a person by your stickers, kind of, by what you like. And we've been most successful with driving the live tune-in because not only do people post their check-ins to get glue, but you can also post on Facebook and Twitter. So it's like this mad rush and you see that like, I'm checked in at 8 p.m. on a Tuesday with 20, 30 of my friends to Glee. And we've had some success with news as well. Um, we did great stuff for, for Piers Morgan. Um, we've done a lot with, uh, with Anderson Cooper. And we're excited to, to do more because it's, it's a good place to bring people in and then from there the conversation can grow. Yeah. And, and I guess, is there a way then that, uh, what are ways that we can use social TV to, you know, um, gain insight from, I guess, our viewers. What are some of the ways that we can elicit that content, and what is the best way to integrate it on air so it seems organic and it's not, you know, I, just a feed running? Or just one thing that, that crosses my mind, uh, meet the press during the uh, Egyptian Revolution. We it, we, in, in Studio A, in, in our DC Bureau, we have this mammoth. It's almost, it's a, a flat screen almost as big as that. It's like 80 inches or something crazy like that. And on Meet the Press, David Gregory and somebody from the Brookings Institute, uh, we're, we're watching the, the feeds uh, coming from the Egyptian Revolution and all the hashtags. And the guest noted that this is 
this, we're witnessing a, a 21st century revolution. And I mean, you know, and Andy Carvin and the work he's doing with that, I mean, it's, it's really clear that that's, that's a huge component in listening to what's going on. CNN did a great job on Monday with the debate. I, I think I read that the, the hashtag for the debate was at like 1.5% of the tweets during the debate had that hashtag, which is amazing that out of all of the conversations everywhere on Twitter, they were able to use the CNN branded hashtag and really reach what is a huge number for something that is, is news and, and might not be as relevant to people around the world, but it's, it's fascinating to see that level of activity. Right, and then on a lighter note, uh, when Anne took over and Meredith left, uh, why we love Anne and uh, what was the other hashtag? Goodbye, Meredith. Those were, those were trending topics when, when the Today Show changing of the guard took place, and that was kind of nice. Yeah, I mean, I think people are getting it more. You know, you talk about 1.5% and people actually putting it in. You know, they're not just having the conversations anymore and, and feeling that sense of community, but they're actually, you know, engaging in the way that, that networks want you to, that, that are, give very real results. I mean, um, you know, the early days of CNN and Twitter, I think, you know, a few years ago, and they, they were kind of early on in, in adapting it, uh, you know, was this person on Twitter says this and has this comment. And that's nice, you know, but it's, it's a lot different to, to have this sense of, you know, here's what the general consensus is right now. Here's what people are saying. And, and to kind of drive that conversation and get very real results from, from what the general audience is saying. Yeah, so I guess we have just a few minutes left. Um, the last question is, does, do those two screens in social TV need to merge? You know... Like on one box? Yeah, like, or I mean, as a network, I mean, is the best experience for the user for me to, to put that tweet on air? Or if we're engaging people during a show and, you know, Piers Morgan is on the Facebook page and interacting with people, is, you know, is, is that a better experience, do you think? Or do you think people want to see, you know, their faces on TV, they want to see their tweets, they want to see their Facebook posts integrated? I, I think people want to be able to trust the people who are on air. Um, and back in the day, uh, you would, see bus backs and billboards that said news team 1172 news you can count on and things like that and people if, if they're really your neighbors you talk to your neighbors right we listen to each other we have conversations and i, th I think if that's genuine and that really takes place um, in terms of creating awareness and in terms of creating awareness what you're talking about is marketing and that's some journalist with a capital J, they don't, they don't like the notion that they need to sort of grasp the notion that all of us who work in this field, when we shake hands with people and say, hi, I'm Jim, I work for NBC News, that's marketing, right? When I'm on Twitter talking about what I'm doing throughout my day, that's, that's marketing. And I think everybody needs to grasp that. And the, in terms of marketing on the web, it, it's relationships and conversation, and that's how you build trust and awareness. Yeah, I mean, you know, you talk about I think the line between journalism and marketing has, has blurred so much now. I mean, Jeff Jarvis is a great journalist, but he's also a great marketer of his journalism. Oh, you know, yes, he, he is. He has a way of, <laughs> of connecting that. You know, he gets on Huffington Post, and then he talks about it on Twitter. You know, there, to, to really do journalism well... He's a micromedia mogul, yeah. really. I mean, and in some respect, we all are, to, to a degree. But we're trying, and yeah. I, I think that's, that's what networks have to achieve, is that balance of keeping the journalism not diluted, but also marketing the journalism in a way that's At the fun. end of the day, I mean, it's it, a good story is, is the secret sauce. Yeah. Right. Okay, well, I think that is our time, so um, we'll yeah, end it there. Minute, minute 44. Oh, minute 43, sorry. <laughs> I was looking at this <laughs> clock at uh, 2.50. Well, um, then that okay. said. <laughs> so now we tap dance. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you guys have anything else to add? I guess Kimberly didn't What about these guys? Like, oh yeah, any yeah. questions? I guess that's a better point. Social media metrics becoming a part of Nielsen Arbitron? Repeat the question for the live audience. You said, do you see social media metrics being a part of uh, Nielsen Arbitron? Uh, my guess is not for a long time, but what, what are you I don't know. I don't know. I'm, a, I'm not a metrics guy. I'm a yeah. cameraman. I think it's, <laughs> it's tough too, because it's, you know, we're, we're seeing these numbers that are actually based on a far larger percentage of the population. We have you know, 1.2 million users versus the people with the Nielsen boxes, which is what, like 25,000 people? So we're actually able to get a bigger section um, of, of the viewership and maybe direct from there, but do all of those, do shows automatically have the same 
people watching as the same people who are engaged with social media? No. A show like Doctor Who does fantastically on Get Glue, but it's not like at the top of the, the rankings of the ratings. So. Yeah. I mean, I think the better chance is that social media metrics are going to become more acceptable than, say, the Nielsen ratings. Because, you know, the, the, right now, Nielsen is the be all and end all for advertising, but, you know, maybe there'll come a day when knowing how many Twitter followers or, or Get Glue check ins has an actual impact on advertising. But if, if your inbound links from, uh, to your videos are from Facebook, well, I mean, those are real metrics. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Okay, now we actually are out of time. I apologize. The music's about to start. <laughs> Play us off. But yeah. Uh, yeah, have a good Thanks. Thank you.